Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 210th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to the sixth annual French Week on the Simply Luxurious Life blog. Because this is French Week, today's episode welcomes a guest who is the business owner behind Paris Perfect Rentals, as well as London Perfect and Italy Perfect Rentals. So if you are looking to be traveling to France, because she has rentals in Normandy and Provence, as well as beyond France into Italy and into the city of London. I think you're going to enjoy today's episode. In fact, Madeline Byrne is a three-sister team that runs this business, and she will be speaking about where the idea came from over 20 years ago and how she's been able to make it a continual, successful vacation rental company and whether the storms that are completely out of her control, most recently, obviously COVID. I am so excited she joins me this week because she is not only going to talk about France, which she will do because we will talk about all sorts of things, especially her two petite plaisirs at the end of our conversation that will sweep you away to Paris and let you live a little vicariously through her vivid descriptions. She's also going to talk generally about tips for business success. As I mentioned, she is the head of this company along with her sisters that's been around for over 20 years. So how does that happen? Well, not without a lot of foresight and tenacity and clarity about what you want your business to do. And she's going to kind of delineate some key things, no matter what your business is, to help you be successful. And if you have been thinking about, but haven't really took the step to select a vacation rental that is luxurious as Paris Perfect, she's going to walk you through what the amenities are and what you're fully paying for, because it's not just the accommodations. It's ultimately an investment in peace of mind. As someone who has stayed in London Perfect Rentals, I will be sharing my own experience and why I cannot recommend their company more highly. All right, as we get to the conversation with Madeline Byrne, I just want to let you know that we recorded this in mid-June 2021, so about a month and a half ago, almost two months ago. She is going to share, which I asked her to do, um, what it's like over in France and Italy right now with different restrictions. So just know she's sharing this at the time of mid-June 2021. All right, here we go to the interview. I do hope you enjoy I have a feeling some listeners may already know and have enjoyed the beautiful vacation rental company's accommodations in France. And if you are dreaming of traveling to France and want to rest assured your accommodations will match your ideal you hold in your mind, you are tuning in to the perfect episode. Joining the podcast today are the founder of Paris Perfect and London Perfect, Madeline Byrne, and general manager of Paris Perfect, London Perfect, Italy Perfect, and founder of Italy Perfect, Lisa Byrne. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. We really appreciate your, your interviewing us. 
Well, I'm welcoming you in um, during our annual French week on the blog. And I know we will talk about all of um, Italy Perfect and Lenin Perfect as well, because I have experience with Lenin Perfect and I'm so excited to talk to you about that. But we are in the middle of French week. And so you have an audience of Francophiles right now tuning in. Wonderful. <laughs> like me. <laughs> like you. I married They're... one. <laughs> you did? <laughs> How can I get any closer? <laughs> yes, yeah, true. <laughs> I, I guess that's where I want to start is, is with you, Madeline. It, it all began with a single Paris apartment. Exactly. From there, Paris Perfect was founded in the mid-1990s. When did you know you had a viable business model and when did Paris Perfect emerge? That's a good question. Um, it started basically as a hobby. Uh, Philippe, my husband, uh, I met this crazy French heart surgeon, Philippe. We got married um, he moved to London and we had his apartment then was empty. And the way it started out was we basically lent it to friends and family um, and d- discovered that they loved the experience of living like a Parisian as much as I did. And so it took a while, but I eventually said to Philippe, you know, this idea of a short stay apartment rental in Paris could be a real business. And that's how it started over 25 years ago. And, and we're still a family-run company. Oh, and that, that's what I was learning as I was doing the research. It's not only you and Lisa, but your sister, Pat, as well. You are a, a family of, so you grew up in a family of six sisters. What, exactly. And you traveled around the world with your family because you were an Air Force family as children. What yes. was it specifically that drew you maybe more so to France and London and Italy? Because I'm assuming you probably went far more places than that. And then what was it that opened you up to just this vacation concept of, I mean, you shared right there with I always wanted to go back to Europe. My, we were very fortunate that my dad worked with NATO in the early days. And, um, and so therefore, NATO being based in Europe, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was retransferred back several times. Oh, I so see. Uh, he flew fighter aircraft and his second job was man- manning, managing radar sites. Um, and it, w- it was in Italy when I was really young and we love Italy and then Germany. Um, and I just always wanted to go back. And so out of when I was in graduate school, I was transferred to London to be a financial analyst. And I met this crazy French guy skiing on a skiing holiday and the rest is history. We started dating. My clients were French. So I was commuting between London and Paris and we eventually got married. So that's sort of how I fell in love with Paris and decided that's the city for me. And that's how we sort of started the business with his, his apartment when he finally moved to London. Ah, okay. I mean, and that makes perfect sense. But, and that you had the insight you were, you had lived there. You saw that people were wanting to be there in Paris and, 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 and have that tr- more of a, less of a tourist experience and more of a temporary yes. resident experience, which is, yes. which is what I love about staying in vacation rentals. And I stayed in, um, London perfect, um, rental in, near Kensington in 2017. <sighs> And it was the most, wow. I, oh, I'm I, so glad I can't thank you all enough. Um, it was the most relaxing because it was the first night I got off the plane from traveling across uh, transatlantic. Oh. Right. And it was, you know, I was exhausted. I have never had such a nice sleep after that long of a flight. Cause we come from obviously the West coast and it was just, I just, yes. yeah. So thank you. And I will talk more about that oh. in a minute, but it makes a big difference versus a hotel, even though they may be lovely, having your own space just to yourself and someone who's tended to the details, having a biscuit and your tea ready. And uh, so, thank you. Oh my no, God. That was really, that was really important to me when I, when we founded the business that because we were a family that moved so often, you know, we were posted to new posts every sort of one, two and three years. Then finding yourself a stranger in a strange land. My mom was six girls having to sort of find her way to the nearest bakery or supermarket or whatever, it was always hard. And so my, my dream had always been to make people feel comfortable to have, you know, a basket of goodies when you arrive. So you could just relax, put your feet up and then to have the, all the comforts so that you really feel you're at home. You feel really welcome and secure, uh, comfortable and secure. Yes. That's a very good point. I want to speak a bit about your, um, 
remodeling and decorating expertise because you have remodeled more than 80 Parisian apartments. And that, that, yes. oh, I just, I'm just absolutely bowing down. What, what oh. objective um, or what objectives ensure an apartment, since we're talking about that, that comfort is in your eye perfect and welcoming to both a homeowner or a guest? So when you're redoing these, what is it you're it's dry? decisions. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's like a punch list for me. And it took a while to convince our architect. Now we don't even need one. You know, we just know what walls, you know, what we can do here, there and everywhere. But it took a while to make an architect or any kind of engineer understand what was important to us as a North American. Um, And it would be things like more, I'm sure you've stayed in apartments in, in Paris where they only have 25 watt light bulbs and they're only lamps. And so you can't really see at night. You can't read a good book. Um, it just feels dark and gloomy or like you run out of hot water. Things like that. Just you can, you can okay. <laughs> you can associate with that. So that was the, you know, that was my challenge at the beginning was to be able to create the list to say, hang on, the French do it this way. But we need to change that and have something like six plugs, six double plugs in a kitchen alone. And now it's eight double plugs in a kitchen so that you not only can plug in all your appliances, but you can plug in your computer, your iPad, your iPod, et cetera. Um, Ample hooks, the team jokes that I insist on having a minimum of 24 hooks in a a one or two bedroom apartment behind the doors. Uh, So just, just little things like that, that... The French maybe initially didn't think of washers and dryers. Uh, early apartment rentals didn't have washers and dryers. We insist on that. Uh, we're, we now have air conditioning in almost every single apartment. So that was the challenge, was to create that list. And then the second challenge was how to get it executed. And it took a while. There, there were a lot of do-overs. Were there? Okay, I was going to ask you. And then you were working with French contractors, I'm assuming, and architects. Is that right? Or are- yes, yes. And, and that is... Yeah, it would be hard to bring in. It's very hard. We did try once or twice to bring in, say, a designer and an architect from London because we've also done remodeling in London. Um, But, you know, you really need someone on the ground. And so we're just very fortunate to have a team of builders who we've worked with for now almost 20 years and who know exactly that I, if I see a single plug on a wall, you know, yes, it costs more to put in to, to buy a double plug, But the marginal cost for a double plug versus a single plug is so small that they had better not go cheap on me. (laughs) They better put in that double plug because you you don't just have your computer. You now have your phone. You you know you you got to plug in a lot of things. Yeah, so many things, and you're leaving the 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 space every time and you're draining them. So you're coming back to that home base and recharging not only yourself, but your devices and you need those to get around now. I mean, that's, we, that's all we rely on now, not a map anymore as we were 20 years ago. I remember holding them. Yes. Now. Yes. Wi-Fi. We, you know, we have the fastest Wi-Fi. You can call and almost all of our apartments have a phone service in Paris anyway, where you can call free to the, to landlines in the United States. Just those little comforts nice. that yeah. you don't think about before you travel, but you sure appreciate it when you're there. And you talked about how, how welcome you felt at London Perfect. Well, it, in Paris, it's the same thing at Paris Perfect, that we, we have our sofas and sofa beds made for us in Italy, which we discovered over the years. A lot of this was trial and error, that they really have the best engineering of sofas in our view. Um, so that the, the, the beds, a sofa can be, can be a sofa bed and it'll have memory foam mattresses. It'll be very stable and very, you know, uh, supportive of you when you're sleeping on it. Just little things like that, or that the covers we, we have, our apartments are super clean. They were super clean before COVID. And part of that is because all the arm covers and the seat covers all come off. We order duplicates of all of them and they can be washed so that in between guests, we put on a fresh seat cover and a fresh arm cover. You can't even tell it's an arm cover. It absolutely Velcros on. So those kinds of things you were asking me about decorating tips, look for those kinds of covers. Those are details that matter for not only now post uh, COVID, as you said, but and I, I, and I can attest to that. You're, the that apartment that I stayed in was meticulous. And that bed that I slept in to, to speak to the comfort of the bed. I mean, I have never had that comfortable to sleep at a vacation rental, number one. Number two, when you're exhausted after a jet, a jet lag trip like that, you, you just, everything aches. And I woke up more yes. refreshed than I've ever felt. So I, I mean, oh, thank you. 
And the same thing, we had the mattresses made for us. We, we had them made for us in France, actually. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, it was lovely. I, like I said, I couldn't, I didn't really, I was in London when I woke up. I was in such a deep sleep and so, so just rested. It was just one. You achieved our goal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, and I, I want to speak to that full experience that um, Paris Perfect, London Perfect, Italy Perfect provides. It's not just the accommodations. I was, uh, ha- you know, arrangements at the airport. I, as you said, had someone at the apartment. Can you walk some who hasn't made arrangements with you yet, what the whole package is that they're paying for. Yes. It's more than, yes, it's more than just the rental. It's the entire knowledge of everyone in our company about the apartment, the neighborhood, how to come in from the airport. We have taxi drivers or drivers who we've worked with for years who are honest, who will be waiting for you there at the airport, who charge extremely reasonable prices and he'll take you right to the apartment. And if you have an odd check-in time where in, you know, for normal apartment service companies, they would say, I'm sorry, we're closed, or you'd have to pay an extra fee. They, they would have the keys to the flat to let you in. So it's, it's no worries from the moment you step on your, on the flight. Peace of mind. And that's part of the stress. I think people imagine they yes. have, and that maybe if they, that, that that's what will maybe prompt them to not make these decisions, either travel or to either take that trip that they've always wanted to, to that particular place. It's true. And we make it so easy. I mean, I'm an American. All of our team speaks English. I know what it's like to, to, to be lost in a new city. And so every, the whole business has been planned around me having a horrible geography, a sense of geography, Figuring out what what are you know what are my questions and the team you know says I'm sort of the lowest common denominator that I would have the most you know basic questions but if I've got them other people will have them and I'm going to ask them so that we figure that out so that we show like in Paris you you'll probably remember you go into a building and the lights are timed well a lot of people who've lived in homes freestanding homes their whole lives don't realize that apartment living for to save electricity a light would go off after 30 seconds or a minute so you know we would show we'd meet you at the door and show how every single floor has this little lit up light so that you can you know plug uh, push it again to get to get the light back on so you don't panic um, things like the elevator. Elevators are generally smaller. So you always, we always have this rule saying one suitcase, one person in an elevator, just so, you know, they, they go up, they, the, the luggage gets delivered and there are no problems. So yes, it's, it's all those little things to make someone feel at home the minute they step on the plane. That's and that and off the plane. Yeah, it is, and I can attest to that too. The, the the taxi driver was very friendly, very swift, and and affordable for the lovely car accommodations that I was given. I mean, it was just from beginning to end. So thank you. Oh, I'll let him know. It was wonderful. You know, during that stay um, near Kensington Palace, I stayed in an apartment, as I mentioned, that was just absolutely welcoming and cozy and, and just all the luxurious little amenities were attended to. And it was tucked away back by a church where Beatrix Potter was married. So I just delighted in the history that surrounded me as well. Now I have to take an intermission to introduce you to three sponsors. That'll take about three minutes. Go grab yourself a cafe au lait, a chocolate truffle, something delicious, maybe a croissant or a pain au chocolat. Whatever you do, be sure to come back because we're going to talk about business advice. We're going to slip away to Paris and her petite plaisirs and oh, talk about what it's like being in Italy and France right now. I'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by Thrive Cosmetics. That's cause, C-A-U-S-E, medics. Thrive Cosmetics products are made with clean, high-performance, skin-loving ingredients. Their clinically proven formulas not only highlight your best features, they actually improve your skin over time. All Thrive Cosmetics products are formulated without parabens, sulfates, and phthalates. Thrive Cosmetics never tests on animals. They're Leaping Bunny and PETA certified as 100% vegan and cruelty free. And Thrive Cosmetics has a bold mission that's truly bigger than beauty. For every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help women thrive. 
Their liquid lash extensions was one of the products I had the opportunity to explore. And indeed, it did not flake, clump, or smudge as they promised. But I love that it's 100% vegan and made with shea butter and castor seed oil. If there's one item of makeup I make sure I put on every single day before I leave the house, it's mascara. And now I can put mascara on with peace of mind, knowing how the product is made. No doubt, this is one of the many reasons why their Liquid Lash Extensions is their best-selling product. And with their Bigger Than Beauty mission, with every product that is purchased, Thrive Cosmetics has committed to support nonprofit partners with a donation of funds or products. Now, this is a beauty brand that goes beyond skin deep. With clean beauty standards, their omission of toxic ingredients and how they're cruelty-free by never testing on animals, that is what makes Thrive Cosmetics a brand to shop. Now, as a simple, sophisticated listener, here is your opportunity. I have a feeling you're going to love these products as much as the tens of thousands of positive reviews from customers have shared. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash sophisticate for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here on this show. That's thrive, then C-A-U-S-E. M E T I C S dot com slash sophisticate for fifteen percent off your first order. That's thrivecosmetics dot com slash sophisticate. The Simple Sophisticate is also sponsored by Better Help. If there's something that's interfering with your happiness or something that is preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp can help you assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Connect in a safe and private online environment that's also convenient, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Send a message to your counselor at any time, and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating a great therapeutic match for you and makes it easy and free to change counselors if needed. The service is available for clients worldwide, and they have licensed professional counselors specializing in depression, relationships, self-esteem, family conflicts, grief, trauma, so many different specialized areas. Everything you share is confidential. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to get 10% off your first month by visiting the sponsor of today's show, betterhelp.com slash simple. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash simple for 10% off your first month. The final sponsor for today's episode is Woodstock Chimes. Did you know that Woodstock Chimes were the first wind chimes tuned to specific notes, changing the industry forever from looks pretty and makes noise to looks pretty and sounds amazing? Founder and owner Gary Kifstad is a Grammy Award winning professional musician and has created a company known for finely tuning musical instruments played by the wind. These chimes have been called musical works of art and are the world's favorite wind chime. Over 40 years in business, they have sold their chimes in all 50 states and around the world. Woodstock Chimes offers chimes tuned to various melodies and music scales, and each one is different and delightful. They also have decorative chimes, wind bells, gongs, fountains, and sun catchers to help you create tranquil spaces in your home or garden, and a line of personalized hit chimes that are laser engraved with your own message prior to shipping. All of them make great gifts. You can listen to sound samples on the website and you'll even find wonderfully large, deep tone chimes that really make a statement in your entryway or gazebo. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to get 15% off by going to chimes.com and using the promo code SIMPLE. Go to chimes.com, the world's favorite wind chime, and use the code SIMPLE to get 15% off. I love that. So we say, you say Paris perfect, but you actually have um, rentals in Normandy, in Provence. Uh, you have them in throughout Paris, and that's growing. I mean, throughout that's growing. You also 
make the opportunity for people to stay extended and extended stays. What, I guess my first question is how many people are taking advantage of that? Do you see that increasing or do you predict that that will increase? And yeah. Well, and wh- why would it be worth exploring extended stays? Because I love that you've made that opportunity because not a lot of uh, rental companies make that available. And if people can do it and they get to stay in a great place, oh, I, I mean, yes. that'd be a dream for me. So, I, when you asked about the challenges of the business or sort of how did it develop, in fact, it was another extended stays. We began to realize that people have a dream of owning or having their own pied de terre in Paris, just like that, to have an extended stay. And rather than sort of the having to figure out where can, you know, what's available when, uh, is it available for a month or is it available for two months, what about making it affordable to buy into an apartment fractionally? And we decided to test that because we had so many guests saying, initially, could you buy us a whole apartment? And that's how, that's how our business grew. Would you buy us an apartment, remodel and manage it for us? And that's how our inventory grew. And that's how we became developers by accident. But then we said, what about the people who would love to spend a month or so in Paris every year and actually have deeded ownership in an apartment and have no hassles? And that really was the birth of our second business, which is uh, expanding quite rapidly and happily, you know, very happily with several hundred very happy owners. And that's been kind of the phase two of the business. And it has more than anything allowed people to have extended stays in Paris without the expense, but no return of renting an apartment for a month or two months in Paris and having to rent again or rent a hotel room for a month, you know, for a small fortune. It's like you, you own, you have deeded ownership in an apartment Management fees are extremely reasonable, less than the cost of a one-month rental, and you've got equity in the apartment. And that that has been the most successful thing that we've done, actually, just before COVID, starting just before COVID. That's, I, well, I love that you had that there, and I need to explore that more, too, because I, I mean, you're basically investing in what you love doing. It's not just your money you never you actually invested. So that's, that's motivation right there. I think that will be definitely something of interest to many listeners. Um, so thank you for speaking a bit about that. I, I want to, you and your sister, um, your sister was, I'm going to just share this with readers. Lisa was the director of Apple computer, a director of Apple computer and headed up the app corporate communications. Yeah. And so you both are business, you're in business, you run this business for over 20 years. What are some just business key do's that you recommend someone always remembering to do? And then maybe a couple of don'ts. Don't, you know, just generally, obviously, but you're obviously doing it very well. Your websites are clear and friendly, easy to navigate. You are consistent. The quality is consistent. What is it that works and that you would sh- share with people who maybe are considering or are in business already for themselves? Sure. So let me think. A few things are I'm I'm a risk taker number 1. And so if you if you know it's important to to know that you you're willing to step out there and try something new, try something different. You're willing to fail because not everything we've done has worked. We we tried a tours and concierge business that was just too difficult to scale. And we realized that there are so many people independently doing a great job. It wasn't something that we could devote the time to that independents could. So not everything is going to work. I I think that's one of the lessons to learn. But that doesn't mean that you're a failure. You just pick yourself up. And this is what I had to do multiple times, even, even, you know, in my career before we started this business, I had, I was a partner with an investment bank. I was one of the first female partners, but I failed at things. I, I, you know, there were certain jobs I wasn't good at or certain times, you know, I just was a bit of a rebel and, you know, that was the time to keep my mouth shut and I didn't. So accept that not everything is going to be a success and just pick yourself up and start over. So our first rentals weren't successful. A couple of the apartments that we remodeled didn't work out. So my second piece of advice is don't overextend yourself. You know, look at what you've got and what you can finance and say, okay, I always need to have a rainy day fund, which, you know, is what helped us survive this past year and a half because it's been quite rough and many of our, our competitors didn't survive. But we always believed in having a rainy day fund. And, and so the, the expenses that we had to cover, we were able to, and thank God we're, you know, we're coming out of it. Um, 
uh, keep trying. You know, you sometimes you need to find a way maybe to, let's say you have a store, let's say you have products that you love to, to sell to people and it's not quite working. Like you're just not getting the traction on, on a website, on your website. Well, see what other distribution channels there are that you could go on. Change your product. Maybe, maybe, you know, what exactly you're selling you love, but the, the market's too small, but you still have gained some skills in acquiring products. Those are some of the key pieces of advice that, you know, we both, my sister and I, all my sisters have had to follow. Okay. I appreciate that. I think just hearing that from someone who has been in the, a business for a duration and has weathered all sorts, hey, especially most recently weathered what you have and what worked, why it worked. I want to speak to that real quickly because you and your sister right now are together in Italy. And, and what are travel restrictions right now in Europe, um, whether it's Italy or France? I know they're constantly. France just changed theirs last week for Americans. But what is on the ground? So can you kind of tell us what, what's your experience? Yes. So it's still, it's still a bit of a challenge. You want, like in France, they've opened up much more. They've opened up more than Italy has in the past few days. In France now, you, you can fly with a test showing that you're, you're negative or if you have had the vaccine, which is great. So France has really started to open up. You don't need to wear a mask outdoors, but you do need to wear a mask if you're in a store. If you're in a restaurant, they, st- they have divided your seats in closed restaurants with plexiglass and things like that. So you can take off your mask in a restaurant, but, um, uh, in a store, you would need to keep your mask on, but they're talking about removing that restriction soon as more than 40%, I think of the country has now been vaccinated in Italy. They're still until next week requiring masks outdoors, but that's going to stop in about a week, which is wonderful news. And then my guess is then that the, the requirement for having masks indoors will follow the, the lead of France. And a few weeks after that, that will, that will end as well. Come as soon as you can. Honestly, come as soon as you can, because Lisa and I were walking down the Ponte Vecchio in Florence today. Normally, in, a, in the month of June, we were laughing that it's it's just jammed. You know, it's just so crowded with tourists taking pictures and enjoying and walking. It was um, it was just very few people. And even walking down the most popular streets in Florence or Rome, same thing. I went to a museum in Paris, the Carnival Museum. And oh, by the way, we have an, an Instagram account that where I, I really believe in sort of sharing the fun and the experiences. And so I, I started to do a tour of the Carnival Museum, which has been closed for four years in Paris. And we just got a ton of really positive responses about it. But it was great because there were no crowds. It was easy to get tickets online and there were no crowds. So come as soon as you can. No, that's what I was going to ask you. What is it like there? It sounds like there's very few tourists, but it's gradually increasing. And that is just unheard of. Um, as you just said, some of these places, crowds would be crowds. Yeah. It's great. And I love to speak. I, I speak French because my husband didn't speak great English when I met him, but yeah, I like to talk to people. I'm, I'm from a family, you know, an Air Force family. We, we don't have a lot of pretensions. And like my dad, you know, I just like to hear about people. And so I got into a conversation with uh, these guys who are, who are garbage collectors in Paris. And we started talking, we were joking with each other. And they said, come, come, welcome in Paris. Welcome in Paris. It was so cute. So that's the feeling. Well, and that's one thing I was going to ask you too. Um, for each of you, uh, what was the the occasion or the event or the outing that you most savored partaking in once you could? Once, because were you in Europe during uh, the the pandemic lockdowns, or were you in the United States waiting to get there as soon as you could? We were in Europe. Um, we were in Europe when it started. And we were lucky enough to be able to get to the U.S. Um, before France locked down. So we experienced both sides of the equation. And, and the U.S. was slow to, to, to realize what was happening, as you know, probably, uh, but then caught up very quickly. Okay. And t- so we sort of saw the, the best and the worst, if you will. You did. Yeah. So that's, I guess, you know, speaking from, you know, what did you miss? What were those first oh. things that you did when you returned to Europe? What were those oh. things? Oh my gosh, I, you know, just that taking, not taking for granted, but really, really getting more deeply. Pastries. I <laughs> am a dessert lover. I just, I have to be honest. I'm a dessert lover. I miss 
Miss French pastry. So the first thing we did, well, the first thing we did was buy baguettes and cheese because Philippe and I are both French cheese lovers. And he has this favorite shop around the corner from where we live where he goes and speaks to the owner, Marianne Quentin. And she would tell him, oh, you, okay, you want this Conte cheese, which is three years old. C'est trois ans, monsieur. It's just great. This is the one. And she's known him for so many years. She'll say, okay, then then you want to get this one. You know, and, he, and Philippe knows I like goat's cheese, so Marianne Quentin. So those were the, those were the two things pastries for me and it started out with lemon tarts and then it progressed to operas the chocolate or gâteaux à l'opéra and for Philippe it's been a whole range of cheeses oh gosh yeah because everything was locked down I can't even imagine what that would have been like missing those those oh and their cheeses are just there's nothing compares and, and and as we wrap up one of the last questions I always ask guests when we're um, having an episode or a podcast episode is we talk about petite years or everyday simple luxuries that you enjoy partaking in or in savoring. I would love to hear what a simple luxury or petite plaisir that you enjoy in your everydays. Could you, would you mind? Or, and if you want to share more than one, we would all love to hear it because you're going to take us to France curiously right now. <laughs> all right. So I think the first one is stepping, is walking on the Jean de Mars gardens in the morning. It's just magic. It's kind of watching life begin a, a day began and if you if you get up you know around 8 15 or 9 15 for the first thing you get to watch is the parents taking the little kids to school because this this arrondissement is very is very much full of french families so you get to see you know the the you know the the kids running to school we're late we're late we're on and then the the el- the, the slightly older people are working, buying their baguettes and then heading to the champ de mars and just walking around the gardens. And there you'll see people sitting on benches, reading, getting ready for their day, um, soldiers at the Ecole Militaire jogging, the pompier, the firemen of Paris doing little jogs and things. It's just magic. And then you see the Eiffel Tower in front of you. And as corny as it sounds, it's magnificent. It's, it's just like you're there. You just I say to myself, I'm here. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And the second, I've kind of referred to it, it's desserts. <laughs> <laughs> it's planning a meal around a dessert. So it's like watching my kid, never having too much, but just going, okay, I will have two macarons <laughs> after lunch. That's, that's my other petit plaisir. And if, if we're in the U S my, my daughter is a better baker than I am. So it's having her help me make our own macarons. Oh, fun. Oh gosh. Yeah. And they just, they're just so airy and they're just, oh, they're oh full of the filling. The oh filling. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you you've, you've taken us there. I so appreciate that. I don't know when um everyone gets to go to France. I know some people probably are there right now, um, you know, or, or plans to, but um if not, oh, hope they'll come soon. Get on that plane and make that reservation at Paris Perfect. Or if it you know, some of us are Anglophiles too on this um on our readership or listenership. Um it's nice to know that that's available too and Italy now. I want to just make sure that listeners know that to explore Paris Perfect Rentals or London Perfect or Italy Perfect Rentals, simply go to Parisperfect.com or Italyperfect.com or Londonperfect.com for your next trip. As well. Follow them on Instagram on Paris Perfect Rentals. And thank you very much, Madeline, for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Shannon. It's been delightful. I want to thank Madeline again for joining me from Italy to tape that conversation. I also want to thank her sister, Lisa. I know we didn't hear her voice on the conversation, but she was there. She helped set this conversation up. And I appreciate both of them joining us during French Week. With that said, if you haven't stopped by the blog yet, we just kicked off the sixth annual French week. We, it began on Sunday, August 8th, and will run until next Sunday, the 15th. The first giveaway was just announced um, on the 8th, and it is a French-made, handmade carbon steel omelet pan. I know. I detail all the history and why I chose it for our first giveaway. And if you would like to enter your name to give yourself a chance to win it, be sure to explore becoming a top tier subscriber. And on that front, I have good news. The once a year opportunity to save on top tier subscriptions, whether that's monthly, quarterly or yearly, has been announced and is made available this week only. So if you want to 
find out what would best fit your budget. And you want to be able to enter all six of the giveaways for French Week and have the opportunity to win. This is open to international audience, so anyone can win. I ship around the world to whoever wins it randomly as I pick from random.org. Be sure to explore if becoming a top tier subscriber is for you. And I'll provide all those links to the giveaway, to the welcome post of the week, as well as to the discounted post. And every single day this week, two new posts. The show notes are included as one of the posts. And I do hope you'll stop by to celebrate everything French. It is a fun week. And on that note, there is a brand new episode this Thursday. So it's actually two new episodes this week. Unlike our regular once uh, every other Monday, which we took July off, as you know. So be sure to stop by August 12th as we have a brand new episode provincial mystery writer ML Longworth returns and she has some exciting news. Some of you, if you are big fans of hers, like I am that follow her like all over the place, you might know about this, but then she's going to give us some extra insider scoop on this big news. So be sure to stop by and she's going to talk France and Provence and share some new recipes and, and food. Just, ah, oh, it's going to be a fun conversation. So that's this Thursday, just in three days. So two new episodes this week. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.